Greetings and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. On this episode, we are kind of taking an expanse to an expansion to last tutorial, and I have created this interesting bracelet cuff, which is extremely versatile. We're kind of taking the techniques from the bezel here, where we put dragon scales all the way around. We are lengthening it to a bracelet. And with these techniques, you can do quite a bit with it. You can make a wider cuff with peyote. You just make a longer peyote cuff or a wider one. You can just do it with the dragon scales so it has more of a frilly effect. I've attached these big ass beads and a scarab because it's my favorite thing ever. And I had these stud beads, so I figured that would be a good use for them. You can do things like spike beads, pearls, other check glass, diamond duo, stuff like that. You can make the dragon scales extra full by putting it them through each individual divot that are in between the peyote, or you can skip every other one. It was, this is really kind of fun to play with and kind of an interesting technique to do custom work on. So, it's probably helpful if you have taken the previous tutorial and learned how to do the bezel around this thingy. Um, and if you want to make an extra fantastical piece, I've got the rest of this up on Patreon already. There will be links down below. So, for this project, you will need a strip of peyote, five rows, that goes the entire length of your wrist, minus the clasp, which is usually a half inch to an inch. Um, if you're not sure how to do this, I'll go over it a little bit in the next steps. But um, this is going to be even count peyote, so if you're not familiar with, familiarize yourself with it. I have a video, um, and I will leave links so you will know and understand how to do this. So... Full band of five rows of peyote stitch. And you want to make it sure that it's the long way, not the short way. Because we need all of these jagged pieces on each side. I forgot to mention that that peyote band is made from a size 11 Delica bead. An indeterminate number of dragon scales. This depends on the length of your bracelet and how many sides you want to do. You can put them just on one side, you can put them on both sides. Five grams will get you where you need to go. You will need size 15 seed beads, potentially size 11 seed beads if you are making a pattern that um, fits better with added beads. You will need an assortment of beads to put on top of your bracelet. I am using some bicones, these stud beads, and a center piece. You can also use dangly drops to kind of attach and add an interesting flair to it. And what have you. You will also need a clasp of your choice. I'm going with a button shank just because I'm running out of clasps and that's what I've got. You'll also need a stop bead or this springy coil thingy. And of course your needle and thread. I'm using a size 12 needle and some 1G. And with all that being said, let us get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is develop our initial peyote base for our bracelet, and we're going to start that off by adding on a metric fuck ton of beads. So what I mean by that is you'll want to add about enough delicas for a bit more than your bracelet length, minus whatever you're going to be using for your clasp, which is usually a half inch to an inch, somewhere between there. Don't fuss too much about how many beads you're adding, whether it's going to be even or odd. I'm not big on counting things, especially things this high. We have to go through the band on the lengthwise instead of building short rows around. Like I have this piece of peyote here where it's like if I were to extend it to the length of the bracelet. Um, that won't work for this project because of the orientation of the beads when we do that. You see how the zigzag is on the side, so if I were to extend this lengthwise all the way to the length of my bracelet all the zigzag ends will be on the end and the other and then the sides of my bracelet will have these flat sides and the whole orientation is across the bracelet as opposed to all the way around the bracelet and we won't have places to hang our dragon scale beads so we're doing it the long way 
And if you need a better primer on the Even Count Peyote, I have one, I think, on my channel. If it's not on my channel, it'll be on our Crystal's channel, and regardless, I will have links to it. So, get comfy with Even Count Peyote. So I've got my length of beads. I don't have enough for me, but I will be able to add them on later. So, what I am going to do is, I'm going to kind of center it on the thread so I have enough room where the tail is. And I have my stop bead or my thread stop thingy. So don't go flush with the end of the tail. Go a little bit more towards the center so that if you need to add more thread or add more beads, you can easily just take off the stop bead and add more on the other side. But with this, we're going to start our even count peyote. I'm going to skip over two delicas and pass through one. Pull it through so that these two at the end are flush and we kind of form a T shape. Then I'm going to continue with the peyote, adding on one bead, skipping over one bead, passing through the next bead. And we are essentially building three rows at the same time. We have one, two, and three. We'll just keep on going like that. Add one bead, skip over the next bead on the chain, and then go through the next bead all the way down. You'll see the difference this makes as you elongate this pattern. We have our zigzags on the bottom. Here we have our zigzags on the sides. Our whole orientation is moving sideways, whereas in this piece, the whole orientation moves up and down. So we want this, not that. So keep on going down until you have about the length of your bracelet. All right, so once you have finished the length here, you can see I have an extra bead over on my stop bead that will prevent me from continuing my even count peyote which means I have an odd count peyote. So all I'm going to do is take off my stop bead and remove that. From there, I can turn my thread and continue by adding on one bead to my next row, so forth. Basically adding row number four and moving down the line. But in this case, I do not have enough beads on my row to cover my wrist. So, I am going to remove my stop bead from this thread where I was at. I'm going to move it to my working thread just so that I stay in place because this is very loose and all these beads will come out. I'm going to put my needle on that what was the tail thread. Then continue by adding more beads till I feel like I got a good length to work on. Pull that down. Take my needle off take my stop bead off of my working thread, put it back on the tail, put my needle back on my working thread, and then continue adding one bead, skipping over one bead, going through the next bead. So you will work on that until you have the length of your bracelet that you need, minus your clasp, and then you'll turn your thread and build on rows until you have two more rows on top of this. So you'll have a total of five rows. So once you have the entire length of your band, it should look something like this. I am going to take my stop bead off of my tail end and I'm just going to attach the clasp so that I'm not fussing with this extra thread because I hate it. So I'm just going to add seven size 15s and my clasp. It doesn't really matter how I put them on because my clasp has a hole big enough to fit through the size 15s, so yeah, just put in as many as you want, loop that through. I changed my mind, I'm adding 13 size 15s because I kind of want this button shank to have a little room, so that working thread came out of this one side, I have two beads on my peyote on this side, I'm just going to go through this one to complete that loop, so I have that. Then I'm going to reinforce that loop a couple times and end this thread by weaving into the peyote. Alright, so now I'm going to work on adding the dragon scales. I'm going to add them in between these gaps. Kind of like what we did when we were making this border. 
with the dragon scales there or on a bezel, we're doing pretty much the same thing. Currently my thread is coming out of the furthermost bead right here, the Delica bead there. I'm just going to follow the peyote pattern and move to the next bead as well as the most sticky outy one because we're all going to cinch each and every one of the dragon scales into these ones, these gaps, little things here. Pull that through. Try not to catch any other beads on the way. And we are set there. This first one's going to be different because it's got nowhere to go in terms of the patterning. So just keep that in mind. Gonna add one size 15, one dragon scale, one size 15. I'm going to pass back through the bead that we came out of, and then Delica right underneath, so that we start half of our dragon scale. I'm going to work my thread around so that we end up back into this bead. I'm going to go through the next Delica on the opposite side. I'm going to go up this gap here. I'm going to turn my thread around. Then basically from these three beads here, I'm going to do a zigzag to turn my thread around and get my thread back into the proper orientation. So coming out this way, I'm going to go through the center bead, just that center delica, pull that through. Then I'll turn my thread around again, go through that very first bead that we started from to add our dragon scale. Now I'm going to go up one size 15. I'm going to pass through the dragon scale. Add on one size 15. Pass through to the next Delica B that is sticking out. Add on a size 15 dragon scale size 15. Go back through that same Delica bead. And then we have three size 15s, we need to have our last one, so we will add one size 15 and pass through the dragon scale. So that we anchor it in between the gaps of the peyote. Now we need to add two more beads and finish this side. So I'm coming out of a dragon scale. I'm going to go down the size 15 on the same side, go through that next Delica, and my needle has already picked up the next size 15, so you might as well do that too. Then we're going to go through the Dragon Scale. I'm going to add one size 15 and pass through the next Delica in order to anchor this Dragon Scale. Add on one size 15, one dragon scale, one size 15. Pass back through that Delica bead once more. So we're passing backwards through the Delica bead that we started from to attach a new dragon scale. Now I need to finish this dragon scale's pattern of four size 15, so I'm gonna add one more size 15. Pass back through the dragon scale. And that is basically what we're going to do along the entire length of this band. I'm just going to go over this once more. So right now we're coming out of a dragon scale. I want to go through the furthest most, size 15. I'm going to go through the Delica that's in between the two dragon scales. Go up the size 15 that is next to a dragon scale. Go through that same dragon scale, add on a size 15, go through the next Delica bead, 15, dragon scale 15, and pass back through that same Delica bead to anchor the new dragon scale. Add on our last size 15 for the set, and pass back through the previous dragon scale. You can just repeat that all the way down until you're at the end of the bracelet. 
If you're finding that you don't really like how close together the scales are, you can always skip a Delica by either adding either a size 15 or a size 11 in between, and then adding your next dragon scale the same way, or you could just leave it blank altogether. So continue that all the way down until you've completed it, and then we will work on the next steps. Alright, so that's about what your band will look like once you've got it done all the way. I am at the very last one, and we're just going to do a little swooshy thing in order to anchor the last one in place and make sure it has four of our seed beads. Right now, I'm coming out of a previous dragon scale. I'm going to go down a seed bead, through our Delica, up a seed bead, through our last dragon scale, add on one size 15, pass through the very last Delica, on the round or row, really. Then I'm going to turn my thread so that I am coming out the opposite direction of this same bead. So, I'm going to go down the center, then diagonal, to start my turn, so that I am at this bead, and then I'm going to turn right back around with the adjacent Delica bead, go up the center again, through the last bead, and this time we are going inside. Then I'm going to add one size 15, go through the dragon scale, and while I'm here, I'm going to add the other side of my clasp, just because I want to. So, since I have three beads here, I'm going to use the center bead in order to anchor my clasp. From the dragon scale, I'm going to go down the size 15, through one side, down the center, and then I'm going to use my technique again to turn my thread around and go back up the outside direction to attach my clasp. So I'm just going to go over the next one diagonally over, then through the adjacent bead on the same row, and then that center top bead again. So I've added the other half of my clasp, which in my case is a metric fuck ton of seed beads to get the button through, and I'm just going to pass back through that same bead. I'm going to turn my thread again in order to reinforce, then I will have this phase complete. Now, we can leave these fringes on just the way they are, with kind of a more chaotic slash natural flow to them, or we can kind of straighten out the beads to kind of give them some shape and uniform structure. And that will involve doing ladder stitches all the way through the size 15s bordering the diamond, uh, the dragon scales. So I'm just going to turn my thread. I've gone from the center up to the one of the ends, pass my bead up through one of the size 15s, and basically I'm going to secure this entire row with the ladder stitch. Coming out of my first bead, I'm going to go down the second. I'm going to pass backward to secure my joint. Go down. Back up. Pass backward to the previous bead, go forward, forward once more, then backward, forward, forward. So basically it's two steps forward, one step back in order to get the ladder stitch. And you will do that all the way down the length. Then, when you get to the other side, you're going to just turn it around, and it's real easy to do with ladder, 
you will just basically end up at this very tip bead here. You'll just go up and back, wrap those around, then you can rotate and continue the pattern all the way down. Once you've finished that, you can decide if you want to continue and add on another row of fringe on the opposite side here, but I think all I am going to do is just add size 15s in between the gaps, just to make it a nice, simple ladder. So go ahead and do that and reinforce, then we'll be adding our final steps. So the next steps are going to involve a little bit of planning, since every bracelet is going to be different. You'll add a different number of beads in each row. Um, to make the length of your bracelet, you'll add a different clasp, etc., etc. So what I have done is kind of plotted a pattern that I want to follow on the peyote stitch. And you can use whatever beads you want with here. Uh, start off with bicones, just because it's more accessible and... Uh, just to get a feel for the pattern. But for me, I'm going to add a bicone, the stud diamond things from Swarovski that I've had and I've wanted to use forever. Um, this one is a single hole. Then a bicone, stud, bicone, stud, bicone, stud, bicone, and then a centerpiece, which in my case is a scarab bead because I have plenty and I love them. Then repeat the pattern on the other side. And you'll kind of get a feel for the fitting of everything and where you want things to go for when we attach our final pieces. Alright, so once you've got everything appropriately ruffled, you're going to work on the front decorations. And keep in mind your clasp when you are doing these. Make sure if you have like a front-sided clasp, you attach these things on the front side. In this peyote band, we have rows of two beads and rows of three beads. We are only going to be working with the rows of three beads, and we are only going to be working with the centers of that row of three beads. So right now, my first row was a two, so I moved my thread over to the next three, and I have my thread coming out of this center bead. And we're going to start off our pattern, which is super simple, compared to everything else that we've done. So I have on my needle a size 15, a 4mm bicone, a size 15. You can add 3mm bicones instead. You can accent with size 11s instead of size 15s. It's just going to kind of go with whatever you feel looks best. So I'm going to pull that down. And in my case, my 4mm bicone is going to stretch to this next row of three beads, so I'm going to thread through the center of that. So we're basically skipping over one, two, three rows of three, and we're going to pass our thread through that segment. So I'm going to dig down and pass through that center bead on our pattern. Pull that tight. So the bicone stays in place. Now I'm going to add my next segment, which is going to be a size 15, stud bead size 15. I'm going to pull it down, and it looks like I'm going to be skipping up to here, this next row of three, if I put that down. So, shove that all down, basically skipping one, two, three, and passing through the center bead on that row. I pull tight, and I have my bead attached. And we're just going to keep going down that path until we reach the end. I have a center bead, so I'm going to pay attention to my center, and it's going to take a few more pieces, especially because this hole is so big, it's going to eat my size 15s. So I'm going to add a size 11 next to that. So it's going to look like a size 15, size 11, my focal, size 11, size 15 when I thread it in the center and continue my pattern on. Then when I get to the opposite side, I'm going to turn my thread around and go back through every single one of those beads so I reinforce it because that's a, a thread that I'm using is kind of on the weak side and that's going to probably take a lot of pressure. So I am going to reinforce it. 
And then you will have your finished bracelet. So, I really did enjoy doing this with the little fringy bits. I just really had fun with that technique and I wanted to try something more of with it. Um, it's going to curl a bit with the way it's stitched and the way it's together. As I had a lot of problems with things lining up properly, it is a tight space, but... Ultimately, it doesn't really matter that much. It looks pretty cool. The way it curls around might not um, curl that much if you put fringe on the other side. I don't know. Try it out. Send me pictures of it, and feel free to tell me if doing it on the other side works as well. But this was a really fun project. You can do all sorts of shit with random beads. You can even put spike beads there. Um, pearls, bicones, random other check glass shapes. You could probably put some diamond duos around there, but yeah, this was a fun project. So, definitely share with me what you did with this. You can do like a full necklace out of this. You can do a ring out of this. Whatever floats your boat. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out the previous tutorial where we learned how to do the bezel like this with the diamond duos. And if you want to amp it up a little bit further, join us on Patreon, where we have this giant big-ass assembly here. If you want to uh, do some extra pizzazz to your general wardrobe and beating skills. So... I think that will do it for me. Be sure to like up this video and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. Check out all of my shenanigans right here on YouTube and follow me around social medias. Check out my new book that is coming out on Halloween. There is an official book trailer on that as well as links to pre-order everything will be down below. And thank you to my Patreons for all of your support. You are fantastic. If you want to join my Patreon and uh, get access to tutorials that I post once a month that are not posted on YouTube, feel free to join me in the description box below, patreon.com slash Odin's Musings. Thank you all so much for joining me, and of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.